Now we're going to review the settings which are related to all of the cross sections which are generated on screen. To do this we're going to go to the central section of the form and expand settings. Following that you may or may not need to expand the extra settings like this. You can make this form larger so if you want to see what else is going on underneath you can drag the bottom of the form down just to see the remaining entries. You can double click on any one of the entries that's found within the form or you can use the pencil icon when it's selected or you can left click and then right click to edit or update. As you've seen the cross sections generally update themselves that's due to this update pull down being selected down here so it's very rare that you'll never need to click on the update button. I'm going to double click on basic settings the great thing about the cross-section plotting is that it's generally plug and play which means that you only really have to leave maybe one form for the cross-sections to update so you can see the change that you've made rather than having to go through a process of updating to see what you've done. In this particular form this really covers the, the basic or fundamental settings of your cross-section plots. So if we wanted to change things like the scale, the title block and even the title block layer um, which is currently on layer text we can change that. Things like the row clearance we can also change. So at the moment uh, we've got a row clearance of 30, a column spacing of 25. The column spacing excludes any of the band headers that you can see down here. So if I put in a value of 25 and decide that I want headers on every single one of my cross sections, that value ignores the, uh, the header um, that is included if we decide to add that in. Fixed row spacing can also be applied, so if we decide that we want all of our cross sections to line up, we could go ahead and select on that. Emitting bands will simply do that, it will remove all of the band content that is found within each one of our cross sections and just leave um, the datum line and the section line on top. The datum specification and datum drawing tabs allow you to control how the datum is set up for our cross sections. We're going to go to the widths and text. You'll see that by default we have a symmetric value of 10. What this means is that our cross sections are being drawn 10 meters left of zero and 10 meters right of zero, which happens to be the center line of our road. Now, if we didn't want that and we wanted to have uh, unequal distances on either side, we can uncheck symmetric. Then we've got four cells to complete. So if we decided the left hand side should actually be about seven and a half meters instead of 10, we need to make sure that we're following the sign that has been added on to the left hand side which is the minus so we need to make sure that we leave that as minus and type 7.5 you can have differing values for the text to the line work so where it says text it's actually referring to just simply the band information that we've got down the bottom the line is referring to the section line so if you wanted a line to continue further than the actual text within the band itself you can actually have that happening but in this case we're going to make sure that they line up and put in 7.5 the only other fundamental part of this form is what's going on down here. Whenever you add new content into your cross sections, these are the default layers and styles and heights, etc., that the software will use when you add new content. So if at any point you want to add content into the cross sections and you are continually changing the content that is chosen, for example, for the layer in the textile, this is where you can set that up. For the time being, we're going to click on OK. Now that preview will have updated so we can simply use our mouse to zoom in and have a quick look at what's happening. You can see there we've got that 7.5 on the left and the 10 on the right. Now there is an option for variable section width so if you do decide that you have widths that need to vary um, and are not consistent all the way along your string you can double click on the variable section width entry. At the moment on the left side for the line work as we looked at earlier and the left side for the text the form is using whatever the settings are found in the basic settings which in this moment is 7.5. Now you can draw an alignment which will dictate how wide your cross sections are so if you wanted a varying cross section width you can use that alignment on the left for both the line work and the text if you want or for one or the other. Also you can decide well actually I want to have um, maybe the line work and the text to finish one meter past the batter that's being drawn at the top here. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to go batter less an offset of one and then we're going to go batter less an offset of one which means that wherever the batter finishes there'll be a one meter offset and that will be the end of our cross section. Let's click OK. 
So you can see that those values are matching up there, 6.6 .6 and uh, 6.54. So you can see it's adding a meter now to each one. A couple of other areas that may be of interest, layout names, if you double click on that, by default, we will generate for you when you plot a layout, layout tabs on the naming for those layout tabs is controlled in here. If you choose to plot to file, you can also use these particular names for the files and then choose where your plot to file is set up. So it's a very useful way if you're going to be using XREFs, for example, um, you could XREF the output of these cross-section plots into another drawing, but choose where that particular location of the XREFs is. We're going to click on cancel. The heading widths option is very useful. So double click on heading widths. The first option is show heading on all sections. And what that will do is it will tell each of the cross sections to add this particular header, which is being drawn here. The size of which and the position of which is all controlled underneath. Click on cancel. Now we're going to have a look at the bands. So this is the information which is being drawn underneath the datum line. 